salvation. We enter the week by hearing the story of Jesus' passion, his suffering and death. In baptism, we have been fused to this story. In Holy Week, we make our way through it again because it brings us to life with Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of these mighty acts whereby you have given us life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. You won't find it in your book. Please listen. And when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at the door out in the open street, and they untied it. And those who stood there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them that Jesus had, what Jesus had said, that they, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their garments on the road, and others spread leafy branches which they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. He entered the holy city in triumph and was acclaimed Messiah and King by those who scattered garments and branches before him. Yet we remember today a real victory of love, your unconditional love and boundless grace you have bestowed upon us. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Help us, your children. Help us, your children of God, to follow your, our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined in his death and resurrection, we enter into life and love with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord.
reconciling love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I will also be with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy is the worst forever. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We confess to God Almighty before the whole company of men and to you, my brothers and sisters, that we have sinned in love, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. Forgive us our betrayals and mercies and our lives, our unwillingness to see the image of God, and our reluctance to accept that love is the only answer. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, wakens my ear, to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm-hmm. 
of Jacob give glory to him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? The second reading is from Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel. seated. Another change that I am making is that I would like to do a little sermonette first and then complete 
the sermon with the passion narrative instead of reading the passion narrative first. So that's what we will do. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be aligned with your will, with your love and your truth, O Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the great advantages and benefits of growing old and being an old guy is that you get to be more honest with yourself and with others. You get to tell it as it is. And if people agree with you, then all is well. If they don't, then simply brush it off as old age or senility or simply being the curmudgeon you always wanted to be. It's a great advantage to being a curmudgeon. Curmudgeons get to speak the truth. My beef is this. Easter without the passion is meaningless at best and idolatry at worst. There can be no resurrection without death. Jesus did not pretend to die. He didn't fall asleep. He wasn't simply a larva turning into a butterfly. Jesus died. As he hung on that painful cross, he cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he died. A celebration of the resurrection is only meaningful when bonded to death. Without a full understanding of the power of death and the power of sin, Easter is meaningless. When does Easter become idolatry? We can witness a little bit of that today. We are small in numbers. On Good Friday, probably even less. But next Easter Sunday, probably be a lot of people here. When we focus on the flowers, on the music, on the sweet little sermon, and all those things that make us feel good, when we come to Easter for that, we are focusing on ourselves and focusing on the things that make us happy and feel good. And that is idolatry. Easter isn't about us. It's about the power of God to destroy sin and death. That's my beef. So today we celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, riding on a colt to screams of Hosanna, a royal procession fit for a king. But in just five days, everyone will turn against him. His closest friends will deny him and abandon him, even when they said they wouldn't. Well, what happened? How did things turn around so quickly? Let me begin with a few comments about the Gospel of Mark itself. Wonderful Gospel. The first of the Gospels written, probably written around 60 A.D. And in the beginning chapters of the Gospel of Mark, there's a wonderful, wonderful setup, the wonderful genre here that, that Mark uses, because in the beginning chapters, everything is rushed. And immediately he went there, and then immediately he went over here, and then immediately they did this, and then immediately they did that, and immediately, and immediately, and immediately. The word immediately appears nine times in chapter one. Now as we near the crucifixion, everything slows down. And time designation and place references, which are vague in the first 10 chapters, now become more important. Details concerning places and persons, events are dated two days before the pastor, uh, Passover on the first day of unleavened bread, at the third hour, at the sixth hour, at the ninth hour. And places are suddenly important. Bethany, the Garden of Gethsemane, the home of the chief priest, the Praetorium, Golgotha. 
Things that were vague in the first ten, ten chapters now become very, very specific. One third of the Gospel of Mark is devoted to this. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> one third of the Gospel of Mark is devoted to this one week, the week between Palm Sunday and Easter, which tells us how important it is to Mark's gospel. One sixth of the gospel is devoted to Jesus' final 24 hours, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. What happens now overshadows everything that has happened thus far. The importance of the death and resurrection of Jesus in Mark and in our faith cannot be overstated. So Jesus travels from Bethany where he is staying with his sisters, Mary and Martha, their brother Lazarus. He's coming to Jerusalem. He's coming down through the Kidron Valley. Those of you who may have been there and you've probably walked on that same path and as you stand on top of the Kidron Valley and look across, you see the temple prominent in the distance there. Jesus would have seen that. Jesus' reputation has gone before him. People have heard about what he did with Lazarus and about his healing and about his miracles and, and how he seems to be fulfilling all the prophecies of the Old Testament. People know this. People are excited about this. And now in Mark, this is Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem, his first entrance. And people are excited. They see and they interpret this as being the Messiah that is coming. Finally, the King of the Jews is coming. Surely this will be the fulfillment of God's promise to send the Messiah. And so the people treat him like a king. They cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means save us, save us. Did you notice in the reading of Mark, there are no poems? Did you notice that? It's Palm Sunday, but there are no poems in Mark. The reason is, in that part of the world, the palm is associated with victory. Sort of like in the Greek tradition with the laurel. Mark wants to make it very clear that the victory of Jesus is not seen until the resurrection. Amen. So there are no palms. The colt, the coats, the hosanna, these are all coronation images. The people proclaim Jesus as their king of the Jews. And with the mighty acts and power he has already revealed, surely he will do some mighty deeds like Moses did, like David did. But what does he do? Jesus enters the city. He goes to the temple and causes a great disturbance. He doesn't criticize the leaders, the Romans. He criticizes the Jewish people. The people at the temple, the priests. He challenges the religious people. He challenges them to be faithful to God. He appears to be supporting Rome when he tells them to give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And as always, he associates with the wrong people. They don't belong here. How could this possibly be the Messiah, the King of the Jews? So in their disappointment, they reject Jesus and call for his crucifixion. The greater the disappointment, the greater the anger. Jesus has upset the Jewish leaders. He's seen as a threat to the secular leaders. And on Thursday, at what we call the Last Supper, Jesus tells his followers that all this will come to a head. And he warns Judas to do what must be done. That night, he tells them that all of them will abandon him. They'll turn their backs on him. And even though Peter swears, Lord, even if you die, I'll die with you. Yeah, right. Just wait a few hours. The world has rejected Jesus. In the morning, Pilate gives the world a second chance. He offers to release Jesus, but the crowd chooses Barabbas. Why would these people choose Barabbas over Jesus? The Gospels of Mark and Luke tell us that Barabbas was in jail for insurrection. 
which means that he was a zealot working to overthrow the present political and religious regime. He wasn't stupid. He wasn't grotesque or a molester. He was an insurgent leader. According to Origen, one of the early church fathers, Barabbas' name was Jesus Barabbas, which means son of rabbi. And in a strange irony here, the people choose the son of a rabbi as opposed to the son of God. One of those little subtleties in Mark that make a very powerful point. So in their disappointment and anger, the people call for Pilate to free an unknown, uh, this known insurrectionist rather than this fake Jesus. One of the things the Bible does is it invites us into the story. And we are asked to consider where we see ourselves in this story. Can we see anything of ourselves? How often have I turned from God to seek other saviors, false gods, idols? How often have I called upon God, Hosanna, save me, save me, and been disappointed when God did not respond the way I thought God should act, the way I was expecting God to act? How often have I been dis disappointed in that way? And then what do I do? How often have we cried out for Barabbas at moments like this and chosen the way of the world rather than the way of God? Our walk continues to Golgotha and to the cross. The world continues its rejection of Jesus. Jesus is taunted and tormented as he hangs on the cross. And then he simply dies. I want to give you something to think about during this next week as you approach Easter. Did Jesus know he was going to die? Now don't give me a Sunday school response. Think about it. For me, the most powerful statement that Jesus makes on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And what difference does it make? We're going to turn now to the Passion Narrative, chapters 14 and 15 from the Gospel of Mark. I know it's printed out. Take that piece of paper, put it under your butt, and sit on it. Because I want you to listen. I don't want you to read, I want you to listen. The Gospel of Mark was written to be listened to not to be read. It was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest Jesus by stealth and to kill him. For they said, not during the feast, lest there be a tumult among the people. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. But there were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was this ointment thus wasted? For this ointment might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they reproached her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you. And whenever you will, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burying. 
And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And Jesus sent out to his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the householder, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready, there prepared for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were at table eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. Well, they began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, Is it I? Is it I? And Jesus said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though you, they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place which was called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to thee. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time, and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately... While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. 
Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I shall kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Master, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a loincloth about his body. And they seized him, but he left the loincloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes were assembled. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their witness did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy the temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. Yet not even so did their testimony agree. And the chief priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he was silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying, Prophesy! And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the maids of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But Peter denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway. And the maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, again, the bystanders said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to evoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man. I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the cock crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes and the whole council had a con held a consultation. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, you have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate began again asking him, have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate wondered. Now at the feast, Pilate used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do what he was wont to do for them. And he answered them, well, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd 
to have him, them released for him, Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with this man called the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Why? Why? What, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, in the praetorium, and they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak and plaited a crown of thorns. They put it on him. And they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck his head with a reed and they spat upon him. And they knelt down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled the passerby, Simon of Cyrene, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means the skull. And they offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him, and the inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests mocked him to one another with the scribes saying, He saved others. He can't even save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he's calling Elijah. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, 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 let's see whether Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that he had thus breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, Joseph and Salome, who when he was in Galilee followed him and ministered to him, and also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked 
him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. And he bought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. And he rolled the stone against the door of the tomb. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Recite our ancient creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and is buried. 
He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. There is no condemnation for those who are depressed. We are reconciled by the cross and at peace with God. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Timothy, peace be with you. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. Still alive? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Hollywood Lutheran. If you haven't been here before, fill out one of the same cards in the uh, pew, and we will be happy to get, keep in touch with you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Al, for coming this morning and preaching for us. There will be a brief introductory meeting for the nominating committee during the fellowship hour downstairs after the service. So, and it is a very important meeting, so please uh, don't run off. We have received an influx of funds toward the uh, Chancellor Calabrian program. We are now hoping to have it completed by Pentecost. We are looking to, uh, if you are inclined to contribute to this program, we do please send a check designated to that uh, fund and we will be sure things get processed as quickly as possible. Belio and I will be talking about the sizing and everything else for this week. I'm sorry, The Calabarium is going to be uh, holes in the side of the back altar where we can put, take and put the ashes of those who have gone before us. And there'll be 
I believe there's room for about 30 or so people. And we're going into detail about that as time goes on. But we would like to try and at least get at least half of it, but if not uh, most of it done before uh, Pentecost. Uh, if you have not turned in your Easter lily form, and we'd like to get an Easter lily, please uh, fill out the form. They're back in the narthex, and you can receive uh, We'll get them in this week for the Easter uh, service. And I'll be in over on, uh, I'll be picking them up on Friday or at least on Saturday for later. Oh, by the way, did you realize next week is Easter? <laughs> yeah. Well, please understand that we also have a potluck. It's the first Sunday of the month. So we're going to be having a Easter dinner. And if you would like to participate in that, there's a sign-up sheet in the back in the narthex. So we'd love to have you fill it out and show up and pig out. Uh, remember, the candles on the uh, back altar are for uh, Ben Leon and Margaret Driscoll, and uh, some of you may remember George Shishback, who was a uh, contributor to this church for many years. So we, we want to remember them and their families in our prayers. Are there any other announcements, and questions, concerns, ideas? Is that the um, schedule for, for this week? We'll have services on Monday, Thursday, which is this Thursday at 7 p.m. Good Friday also at 7 p.m. Right. I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> uh, if you look in your bulletin in the back, you will see that schedule and you know, any other announcements that are, that are going on. I thank you. Let's continue with our service. Let us rise for prayer. Led by Christ in our journey of repentance and moved by his compassion, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord God, you poured out your life on the cross for the sake of the world. Pour out your love through your church. This congregational family asks, that you be with us as we seek new pastoral leadership and make it a community of welcome and grace to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You stretched out your hand and created the heavens. We praise you for the sun, moon, and stars that mark our days and fill us with awe. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule over the nations. Uphold the work of international relief organizations, aid workers, and all who strive for peace in troubled parts of the world. Especially, we pray for Alan, Tasha, and Steve, Chaplain David, Troy and Todd, Yobane, John and Connor. Hear us, O God. You fulfill your promises. Draw near to those who have called on you for help, especially Susan and Raul in the long battle with her cancer, Charles, Baron, Cecilia, and Beth for healing, Nadine and Father Hans with trust in your mercy, Corinne, Joyce, Mary, Ivy, and Inger for wholeness and well-being, Raul Sr. and Bert, Diane, Patty, Carol, and Mike fighting cancers, and Diane, Bobby, Mario, Edward, Bob, and Brenda for hopefulness and strength. Open our eyes to the needs all around us and move us to respond in faith. Hear us, O oh God. You gift this assembly with music. We praise you for singers and instrumentals, for those who compose melodies, those who write hymn texts, and for voices to us in praise of you. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for this congregation and its ministries, that having received all righteousness by faith, we boldly bear witness to a God who loves the whole world. Hear us, O oh God. Now at this time, it is our opportunity to offer forth all of our petitions, our thanksgivings, 
and our praises, either silently or aloud. Let us give thanks for the faithful departed whose transgressions are forgiven and who now rejoice in God's presence. Grant eternal light and consolation for our loved ones, especially Betty Leon, for all who grieve and lead us to be faithful in our path of life. Hear us, O God. Into your compassionate care, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. Trusting in your abundant mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our gathering of times.
once again the scene was changed, new earth there seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the timeless sea. The light of God was on its streets, the gates were open wide, and all who would might enter, and no one was denied. No need of food or stars by night, or sun to shine by day. It was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. It was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, second for the night is Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is our rightful duty and our joy to praise and thank you always, O God, through our Savior Jesus. You call your people to cleanse our hearts and prepare with joyful, for the joyful Paschal Feast, that renewed by your word and the waters of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with the choirs of angels and the whole church on earth and the voices of all the saints gathered in your presence, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Oh, 
Blessed are you, O God of all creation. Your kindness is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth, and for every creature you have given life. Praise to you for protecting your ancient people and for patiently calling them by the prophets to return to you. Praise to you for the words and works of Jesus and for his suffering and death and resurrection. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this is the new covenant in my blood, my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of this all of you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so as a sign of your grace and a sacrament of our redemption, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, until he comes. Spirit on us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Grace this table with your presence as you nourish our souls. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world and send us forth as his disciples with justice, compassion, and peace. For it is through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all honor and glory belong to you, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Make us bold, O gracious God, to address you as our Father, even as we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread is broken for you. The cup of salvation is filled. Come and taste the overflowing grace of God.
body of Christ. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift of faith toward you and in fervent love towards one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you life in harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Thanks, Thanks to you. Know.